Uh, the energy and water bill, as I tried to articulate in my opening statement, is so critically important uh, to the United States of America for our defense because that is the area where we actually um, um, prepare and keep our nation's nuclear arsenal safe for our ultimate customer, the Department of Defense. But as we looked um, at these large accounts for some very uh, laudable policies, EERE, for example, they have literally billions and billions of dollars in unspent um, dollars that they have yet to be able to spend. It, it's almost akin to going to a feast and, and literally being gorged. They can't spend any more money. So we have looked very carefully uh, and meticulously, uh, not only at, at EERE, but at other uh, accounts on the non-defense side. Now, um, on the defense side, we have been robust in our, our funding because of the danger in this world, the need for domestic HALU and the like. But I will say this, we have not overspent there either. We get an allocation to 302B, uh, as do the other uh, subcommittees, uh, but uh, by and large, we have been in the past very, very careful and we will continue to be very careful as we move forward and make the tough decisions in a very fiscally challenging environment. And so, Chairman, you, you moved some, you rescinded some funds, um, and you moved those into those important um, areas that you're talking about. That is correct. Okay. And, and I just want to say I appreciate that it, it, you did the work and you looked at these, uh, you looked at the programs, looked at where we could cut, um, and didn't just do it across the board. You really are sincere about finding out where we can save money um, and return to fiscal sanity. So I appreciate that. Um, uh, Chairman Amade, um, you know, I know that you guys are, want uh, transparency and your, your, your subcommittee is really, really focused on that. But, so I just want to give you the opportunity to uh, talk a little bit about the bill. and how So we knew, even if it was... Even if it was something where you're like, well, it's 200000 We don't. It's like we had everybody come in and go, what are you doing, blah, blah, blah. Put all that on the record in those hearings. Then the markup, once again, if you, wanted, if you, if you were, knew how to stream and do all that other sort of stuff, then you were there. You were watching that process go forward. And then once again, in the full committee, uh, fully streamed on whatever span it is, three, four, five, C-span, something. Um, to where if you were following what your ledge branch uh, folks were doing in, in the 118th Congress, you could watch it without having to try to figure out how to get to C D.C., take somebody's word, that sort of thing. If you are a Social Security recipient, you will need to be aware of these possible changes. Democratic lawmakers in Congress are proposing several solutions to fix Social Security's biggest issues. If enacted, monthly benefit cuts may only occur for a select group of individuals. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video to hear about all of the new details. Also, to say thank you for being part of this community. Every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Enacted in 1935, the Social Security Act was a pivotal move by the US government, establishing a social insurance system to provide a safety net for retired Americans who were facing unforeseen challenges. Despite having been a crucial support system for many Americans over the past 90 years, relying excessively on its funds poses risks. The average monthly benefit is currently $1,706 as of August 2023. Round one of three Social Security retirement payments for the month of October will be sent to millions of retirees in just over a week. The first round of payments will be released in eight days on October 11th for those born between the first and the 10th of a month. 
But according to Yahoo News, retirees who rely on Medicare for health care coverage may see those benefits diminish in as soon as eight years. Senate Democrat Sheldon Whitehouse said the program's hospital insurance trust fund, which pays for Medicare Part A benefits, including inpatient hospital care, may pay 100% of benefits only through 2031. And this is according to projections from the Medicare trustees. If nothing is done by that date, just 89% of total scheduled benefits will be payable. Social Security faces a similar dilemma, whereby the program's combined funds face a 2034 depletion date, at which point just 80% of benefits may be paid. So when it comes to repairing the program's funds, lawmakers generally have two choices, which is to raise taxes, cut benefits, or a combination of both. President Biden, in his address to Congress in February, prompted both sides of the aisle to agree to protect the safety net. The White House, along with Representative Brendan Boyle, has proposed a Medicare and Social Security Fair Share Act. This act would require taxpayers with more than $400,000 in income to contribute more money to both programs. The additional revenue would extend the solvency of the hospital insurance trust fund through the 75-year projection period in the 2023 trustees report. Yet not all lawmakers are convinced it is the right solution. The bill calls for requiring those earning in excess of $400,000 to contribute to Medicare and Social Security on pass-through business income. Currently, pass-through business owners such as hedge funds and private equity funds, may avoid Medicare and net investment income taxes by treating their earned income as distributed business profits. Also, friends, challenges are ahead for many student loan bars who will begin repaying loans on top of their usual expenses. After three and a half years of federal student loan payment pause, an estimated 44 million federal student loan bars are expected to resume payments. Bars in the United States had hoped for a student loan forgiveness at some level as part of the now dead $400 billion forgiveness plan that was announced in August 2022. Due dates will defer for bars, but most will see their payments resume sometime this month. The student loan debt balance in the United States has increased by 66% over the past decade, totaling more than $1.77 trillion. More than a quarter of Americans with student debt owe $10,000 or less. Under Biden's student debt relief plan, nearly 20 million bars will have their debts zeroed out. The Supreme Court ruled against the Biden administration's debt forgiveness plan in late June, ending a program that was intended to raise $400 billion in student loans and ease the financial burden on millions of U.S. families. The CARES Act and other executive orders help relieve student borrowers of paying back loans throughout 2021, dramatically reducing the share of borrowers who are behind on their payments. And this is according to Federal Reserve data. Among adults with student debt, 12% were behind on their payments in 2021, compared to 17% behind on their payments in the fall of 2019. The Federal Reserve found that borrowers with less education were more likely to be behind on their payments, along with those attending private for-profit colleges and universities. Well, my beautiful and my most amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Thank you, dear friends, for being here and for being part of this community. Please make sure, friends, that you enter the weekly giveaway by clicking and liking several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed week.